Hi everyone, so in today's tutorial video, um, as promised, I've put together a quick um, demonstration on how to paint some trees. So I've got about um, six different options you can do, some very simple, some a little bit more detailed, and if you do learn how to paint these trees and, how, and continue to practice at them, it can really elevate any of your landscape paintings you're doing in watercolor or if you want to use any other medium. I'm working strictly in watercolor for this. So I would recommend um, getting a sheet of watercolor paper. You'll need some black paint and a paintbrush. I work mostly with rounds. This is the number eight by Princeton. Uh, and it's a synthetic brush and I prefer synthetic myself for working with um, working on trees. So grab your practice sheet of paper, some paint and a paintbrush, and of course you'll need some water and let's get started. I would suggest starting out with black only and just practice your silhouettes. Once you have silhouettes down and you know the shapes of the trees you want to create, you can start adding color and creating different tones within your painting. But if you're just learning and you want to practice these shapes without worrying about leaving behind different marks as you're painting, you can just work in black, which is what I'll do today for this practice video. So the first type of tree we're going to start with is just simple lines. This is very, very easy, very basic. So you're going to start out with one straight line down, remembering that with trees it's always going to be thinner at the top and your trunk is going to get wider as it gets to the bottom. And then very simple, thin lines. I don't want my tree to be too symmetrical, so I alternate which side I paint the lines on. Letting the lines become wider as it reaches the bottom. And you could stop right there and leave the bottom with the trunk showing and add a few little stems like that. It's a very simple way. Or going on to another one, start again with your line. Pick up some paint and start again your lines. Just straight lines across alternating sides. And then with this type of line tree, you can just work your lines all the way down to the bottom. And here you can begin to pull them all the way across. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll just fill in the center where the trunk would be a little bit. There you go. So that's the first style of trees you can do. And like I said, this is very, very simple. Um, if you can paint a line, you can paint these trees. And this is gonna take us on to our second type of tree, which is also lines, but this time we're gonna angle them. So let's pick up some more paint. Let's do another line and this time instead of doing a cross we're going to do them on an angle so starting from the top and pulling down I 
I find these particular styles work a lot better if you're working with smaller trees. The larger the tree is, the more detail you would expect to see on it. So then you, these are, are pretty simplified to do a large tree. The only way you know what works is if you try it. So just keep practicing. There you go, that's a really simple tree. You can fill in the bottom a bit more. And that's just creating with lines. You're starting at the top, small lines, and making them bigger as you come down. Let's do another one of these, but let's do this one a little bit smaller. Because in the forest, there's a large variety of tree shapes and sizes. Pulling your brush away from the trunk or towards it if you're working on this side. And then filling in the middle a bit more. As you get towards the bottom, you're going to have more branches. It's going to be a fuller tree, so you won't see as much of the center portion of the trunk. And if you want to create it a little bit taller, you can just add on to it, make a thinner top, and add a couple more branches. Now this style um, is actually what I used on this painting right here. I didn't use black, of course these are just different shades of blue, but as you can see it's the same thing. So I did a, a a line straight up and then I pulled out my lines on each side. And as you can see when you vary the tone of them it starts to look quite nice and these are a very very simple way of painting trees. Okay let's go on to our next one. So this is another fairly simple one and it's what I call the zigzag method. So picking up some paint, you're going to start out with a straight line again. Okay. Now very carefully you're going to sort of zigzag down the tree. So lightly on one side, and this way you're kind of pulling down as you zigzag. Pulling down, pulling down. You can let your brush wander a little bit on the paper and get some rough looking sort of branches. This is something that I will show you a little bit later on. Basically you're zigzagging, getting bigger as you get to the bottom. Then what I like to do is go back and just kind of fill in some of the trunk a bit more. You can zigzag a bit more at the top here if it's not quite good. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's try another one. We'll make this one a bit smaller. And you can stop halfway down and change your zigzag. Start here and go differently. And then you can go back in and fill in some trunk area and zigzag again. You can do several layers of zigzags in fact. I find that these look really good for winter trees because they almost look like they've got snow on their branches because their branches are heavy. And that's an important thing to kind of talk about when you're painting trees is that 
If they have snow on them, they're going to be heavy, so they're going to be drooping down a bit. If they're smaller trees, they're most likely younger, which means that they would have a bit more spring to the branches and would be able to hold more weight. So then the shape of them might, they might be facing upwards more rather than drooping down. Let's do another one of these. Leaving kind of your top branch open. You can add a couple things to your top branch if you want and then zigzag down. Now what if we did that, same thing, this time you're going to really let your brush kind of dot as you zigzag. So you're going to start with your small top and kind of dot it, pulling it across. This just adds a bit more variety instead of straight lines. You don't see straight lines that often in nature, except for maybe tree trunks. But you start dotting it, then you get a little foliage on your branches rather than just straight. Remembering to pop it out a bit more at the bottom as the base gets bigger. There you go. You painted a pine tree. So these are three of the more um, simplified versions of trees and play with them, practice them, see which ones you like. I find that certain trees work better for certain paintings, depending on the effect that I want to have or the landscape I'm trying to create. So these are the more simplified ones. So let's move on to these more detailed ones. So lodgepole pines are, as I said, they are tall, they are fairly skinny, and their branches don't always go all the way to the, to the forest floor. So they might look something like this. Um, there's lots of different ways to paint this, but it's starting small and you're kind of creating little dots and bumps as you sort of zigzag back. You can create sets of branches and then you can add in some little twigs and branches at the bottom. These, as I said, they are often found in clumps together or stands of trees. So you'll get your smaller ones in here, your really tall ones, different variety of sizes. So let's practice these. Picking up some black paint start with a line. Let's do a very skinny line all the way down. So with these it's similar to the zigzag method um, with the dotting. So you're going to kind of dot your brush along pulling down your branches a bit on each side not making it too symmetrical. So dotting and pulling. If it starts getting too symmetrical and you're unhappy with the shape, because in nature, trees don't, they rarely look perfect like a Christmas tree. They usually are pretty lopsided or have interesting branches. So make sure you think about that when you're painting. So if this is getting a little too symmetrical on me, I might just paint one side for a bit. Throw in one branch and then paint the other side for a bit. Here I'm kind of using the 
whole brush almost, and when I lay it down, it kind of creates these little fluffy marks at the bottom. And this is going to be a really handy technique when we do Douglas firs. So you lay the brush down, the angle of your, of your brush to the paper is kind of what matters here, and you kind of dot and pull it down. Okay, so take it as far down as you would like. Make sure you finish up your trunk and then add a, a few little branches, um, keeping in mind that the angle of, of the branches, you may want them to come down or you may want them to go up. And you may want them to come out a little bit or maybe just be really thick stumps that sit like that. Keep all those little details help to create the tree and help to make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's do another one. Let's make this one just maybe a bit shorter. And we'll do a couple more little top pieces, make it skinny. This one, what you could try is you could dot it and make kind of a clumpy branch that goes across like that. You could do a few clumpy branches. Then when it gets too symmetrical, switch sides and just do them on opposite. And then decide how far you want it to come down. And you can finish up with some springy twigs sticking out. The nice thing about when you're painting silhouettes is you can go back and kind of touch it up again. When you start to work in color, you're going to want to paint it from the top down all at once while the paint is still wet. If you try to go back once it's dried, then you're going to get a variety in the tone of it and it won't look, it won't look quite right. Okay. Now you can do these really tall. You can do, um, let's do one more. I'm going to just pop this one up into here. Let's say that's as far down as you want to bring it. You really don't want to keep it very, very full so you can finish out your trunk. You can keep it, trying to keep the trunk thin. This one's almost a little thick, but it's not too bad. There, you can be done. With these, you kind of have to practice it and then let your hand just sort of wobble back and forth. Let it guide you. Um, keeping it smaller at first because you can always go back and you know start to make it thicker so if you can keep it smaller first then you get an idea of what what looks good and you can go back and fill in some areas if you want okay so that's something like a lodge bull pine or that might not even be the correct name for them but it's what I refer to my these type of trees as I call them lodge bull pines now we're going to move on to what I would call a spruce tree. These are ones that I paint quite a lot. So you're going to create a line. Now, when I'm working with black, I pulled the line all the way to the bottom. If I was working in color and I didn't want the line to show through after I'm finished painting, I wouldn't want it to dry at the bottom as I'm working on the top. So in that case, if I was working in color, I would draw the line as far as I could quickly paint it and then draw the line, paint again, draw the line. I would work all the way down. 
because it's black, it's all going to look uniform, um, solid color. It doesn't really matter. So with these particular trees, we are going to change the shape. So with these, you can kind of see our branches are pulling down. They're almost like a, a sad face. With these, they're going to go up. So they're going to be kind of more like the top of these. So we're going to pull up. And then as you get a little bit further down, you can start to kind of create some needles. So you're going to make an angle away, and then you're going to start adding opposite angles to it and start creating little needles like that. And these are a bit more detailed, so you want to go a little slower with these. Let's keep filling in the middle sort of as you go with more branches. And just keep creating the needles. What I like to do is create patterns of them sort of so you'll notice I'll have um, some larger ones here and then a little bit smaller in the middle and then some larger ones a little bit smaller right here then larger and then keep it smaller here. dotting in in the middle as you go. Now as you start to get into the bottom, you're going to start to fill in the middle even more to get a really good silhouette because as it gets to the bottom you have way more branches and you're not going to see the center of the trunk again. I like to create all my outside um, branches, all my silhouettes that you're going to see kind of as I go and then I pull them all in to the center and start filling in some of those center branches. Now one thing we haven't really talked about is the amount of water on your brush. When I'm creating black silhouettes, I don't use a lot of water. This isn't about transparency in this case, it's about um, solid color. So I'm using probably more paint than I am water in this case. And that also helps because then I can get a really fine point on my brush and I can get these details without having to switch to a smaller brush. I would suggest if you're going to be practicing these trees to pull out a few of your round brushes and see what ones work best for you. I used to use a different brush and I just have found that this particular one is the one that I go to every time I want to paint the trees. It's just my, my go-to tree painting brush. So as you're pull, coming down your You're making the, the shape of the tree conical, right? You're pulling it so that there's bigger branches at the bottom, more of them, and they go longer out. Or it gets wider at the bottom. That's probably just easier to say. Okay. So now you can look and see, okay, should I fill in some of this in here? Fill in a little bit up here and then start to pull it down all the way to the bottom so that you're sort of flush with your ground. Okay, 
So that's sort of the spruce type that I do. Now that's a pretty full tree, meaning it has a lot of branches, a lot of black. You can also go in and create smaller trees that maybe don't have that much. So keeping your your topmost part of the tree the thinnest and little branches in there. You won't have as much in there. Now as you kind of get your top done and you start filling in your branches down here, you can think about whether you want them to be very full or maybe this is a very sparse looking spruce tree because you're going to have all those different kinds in the forest. So in this case, you don't have nearly as many branches and you can just sort of put them in wherever you think. And just finish it up at the bottom. There you go. Now, if you think it looks too sparse and you want to go back and finish it, you can do that. But let's move on to the next kind. This is a um, Douglas fir type of tree. So it looks something like this. Um, this is one of my favorite types of trees to paint because it's actually quite easy. It just looks like it's overly complicated. With this type, you don't have them kind of moving up and away from the tree and you don't have them going down. They actually kind of create um, like a little Nike swoop almost. So they kind of go up, but they go down first and then they swoop up. So like a little Nike swoop away from the chunk of the tree. So let's show you that. So starting with your straight line. So you can, at the top of these, they're still pretty small, so they still kind of face up, but you can kind of pull them down and then up. Remember, not too symmetrical, so if they start getting that way, switch sides, make it a little different. Okay, so you kind of get the top like that, so you get these little swoops coming down as you get down to the next part of the tree, they start to get bigger. You can start to pull down on your brush a little bit as you create these swoops. These are what I refer to as curtains. I don't know why I refer to them as that. I just, the way that they kind of swoop and come up, it's kind of like a curtain, I guess. So what I like to do is I like to pull from the other side. So instead of pulling right from here, I actually like to pull it from here, further over. And the reason for this is you just get a bit more coverage kind of as you're moving across. It's almost like zigzagging, but um, just with a different shape. So starting from here and pulling your brush down, you can kind of pull it across. Then you can do the same thing over here. Almost dotting it. And what you'll notice is that you get kind of a straight line here, which is sort of like what you want. You can kind of go back in and make some more swoops but you get kind of a jagged rough on the bottom. And that's the idea. Now, as you get more to the bottom, you wanna create the really Douglas fir shape, which is 
kind of coming down and then you're going to flick it up like that. I'm just going to fill the center a bit more. You always go back and create those little jagged marks yourself if your brush doesn't want to cooperate with you. Or you can kind of create the line of where the branch is going to be. And then you can go back and kind of jig it up a bit on the bottom. You bring that all the way to the bottom using the same rules we did for the other trees, which is that they get more wide, they get wider at the bottom. Okay, and then as detailed as you want it to be, you can go back, add in some extra branches. With these, it's really about dotting and having those little swoops that come away from it. Let's do another one that's maybe a bit smaller. So I'm going to start out with your little swoops. Something like that. That's your top of your tree. And then if you want to come down further and you want to kind of skip that part of the trunk, you can do that. And start dotting your branches out. It's almost dragging your brush, really. But just having sort of those jerky movements in your hand. And this one I'm going a little faster, so I'm getting sort of almost a different shape than I did here. Here these were a little bit more um, realistic looking and these are a little bit too perfect. So I'm gonna fill in some of the center and then I might wanna go back with my brush and just add a little bit more to it. But that's the idea is that you just practice that hand movement of sort of All right, so that's six types of trees um, from really, really simple to a little bit more elaborate, but any of these are doable with a little bit of time and practice. And what's great about this is then you can start to create forests because lots of these trees, I mean, these three especially, they live really close to each other. They're these are the trees that are native to where I come from. So then you can start to create whole forests. Can throw in some Douglas firs. detail to them if they're a little something like that then right beside it you could have a spruce
as your trees start to kind of overlap, you don't have to worry as much about the detail because you're going to get that silhouette of the black overlapping. If you were doing this with any transparent paint, so any colored paint, then you have to kind of watch where it's going to overlap and paint them almost at the same time so that it, it stays wet and the colors blend together. But with black, the nice thing about black is that you can keep changing it. And that's kind of why I suggest when you're working on tree silhouettes and shapes, start with black. It's a lot simpler than trying to control where the water is or where the colors are going to overlap. You can start adding all kinds of different trees into it. You can start thinking about different details. You can throw in kind of like a craggy, you know, bare looking tree. Maybe with some, you know, crazy branches and something like that. You could throw that into the forest. You could throw in a stump. I actually, most of the tree forests that I paint, lots of them have little stumps. Just adds a little bit of interest to it. Could have a branch sticking off the stump. Do a little wee one. Playing with it till you get the kind of the shape that you want. And then start thinking you can throw in some grass into your forest. There's a lot that you can do once you know how to paint the different shapes. So that's it. I think um, once you've done that, then you can work on color and you can start to create um, shades of green or blues or do monochrome paintings, anything you like really. In this one, you'll see I've got a few little spruce in here. I've got some Douglas fir, just all different shapes. And you can start to layer them and get painting forests like this. And it's so much fun. Painting trees is one of my very favorite things. When you know the shapes of them as well, then you can start working on creating misty forests like this. And that would be a tutorial for another time, I think. But start with the shapes because all of these have those shapes. Have the fir or the spruce or the little lines, um, the zigzag method, whatever you are kind of more comfortable with. Start practicing those and as you improve, you can upgrade your trees a bit more. And that's it. That's my lesson and tutorial for today. I hope it helps. I would love to see any trees that you paint. So please take me if you're on Instagram. And if you have any comments, I would love to hear. If you have suggestions for the next tutorial, tutorial video, please um, put them in the comments. And thanks very much for watching. Happy painting.